HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will show you some of the scenes as two Hopkinton time capsules were unveiled. Camp Bailout, a firefighters and emergency medical services summer camp for girls took place and many locals attended. We also have highlights from the final week of Ashland Allegiant Baseball. But first, at the July Board of Selectmen meeting, CVS moving into the former Colellas was the big topic of discussion. But I think one of the things that we have to start doing is actually talking business to business with uh, people from Crosspoint and, and, and CVS. You know, I own businesses and, and maybe just sit down with them and, and ask them, you know, is it possible to move uh, three quarters of a mile to the east or the west? At the July 14th Board of Selectmen meeting, some residents asked the board to file an appeal to block the CVS from opening at the former Colella's. Um, and then further, what I would request this evening, since um, that uh, appeal would need to be put in place before the next Board of Selectmen meeting, I would also request on, on behalf of the committee for the Board of Selectmen to take an official vote so at least there's transparency as far as um, who on the Board of Selectmen is willing to take that matter forward or not. The Board of Selectmen agreed that at this current time they do not have enough information or grounds to take an action on the matter. We're not, I, I can feel it. We're not going to file the appeal ourselves. The Board of Selectmen is not going to file that appeal, right? So if we're not going to do that, not that we've taken that vote, but it's fairly obvious, uh, then others can do whatever it is they feel necessary to do. And then if we decide at our next meeting to uh, participate in a process, we can make that decision at that time. when We've had more, uh, more, more time to look at the issues and, and the facts. I think that's the pathway. I think you all just should go file this appeal on your own. And then we can, we can join in if we can figure this out. But I just, I don't, I, I agree. I don't know if I think there's a strong enough feeling that we have a, a, a case to make. But we just ask that we have this as an agenda item for our next meeting. The No CVS group was told they have until July 25th to appeal the building inspector's decision to grant the CVS an interior construction permit. Further discussion will take place at the August Board of Selectmen meeting. Stay tuned to our website, hcam.tv, for more updates on the CVS situation. At the June Selectmen meeting, contents from two Hopkinton time capsules were unveiled. Here is a look at some of the articles of Hopkinton history put on display. Two time capsules were extracted from the cornerstone of the Korean church, formerly the first congregational church, one from 1882 and one from 1939. The time capsules were opened and presented at the June 23, 2015 Board of Selectmen meeting. A local veteran, Mike Whalen, had to use a few methods to get the tightly sealed time capsules open, but once he did, some very interesting articles of Hopkinton history were found. Yeah. No, no, but I mean, we have it open so you can slide everything out. There we go. Oh, we had to cut it, we couldn't unsign it. Well, you know, it's all paper you know, in there. You know, I started putting the flame on, I thought, yeah, you know, maybe back off on that. So you just swipe it down, just pull it down. That's it. This is from 1938. The, the, this is... <clears throat> About, I believe this is maybe the dedication program from the ceremony dedicating the church. I don't know if you have these in your records, Pastor George. <laughs> and then um, this looks like, oh, to you who open this box in future years. <laughs> To you 
you go, May 14th, 1939. On September 21st, 1938, a hurricane struck the eastern coast of the United States, starting around New York and continuing through New England, leveling forests, houses, barns, and churches to the ground. Churches with high steeples suffered the most damage. Over 100 congregational churches were destroyed in part or completely in Massachusetts. Our own church in Hopkinton was a total loss after the 100 mile gale blowing in from the ocean had done its work. While it seemed a terrible calamity to lose our old church building, the new one will be so much more fitted to meet our needs that we should be able to carry on a more far reaching program than was possible in the old building. Every inch of space is being utilized except the room directly above the chapel. It is hoped that this will be finished for club rooms at some future time. As the minister of this church since April 15, 1936, <clears throat> I want to add that a finer group of people no minister has had the privilege of serving. Their loyalty, enthusiasm, and consecration to the tremendous task of rebuilding a church which, ha which had no wind insurance has made it a joy to work with them. May I also add that if and when this box, which we are preparing for the cornerstone, is opened, because the church is being rebuilt or remodeled, sorry, <laughs> carry on in the same spirit and determination, and you will see an even more glorious church built in the name of our common Lord and Master. And then it's signed, Edwin B. Nyland, Minister. I'm very, very careful. What's wrong with that box? It's very tight. That's very tight. I think it's looser. I just don't want to rip anything. Wow. Again, did not stage this. And your report of the school <laughs> committee. <laughs> 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 and your report of the school committee. <laughs> superintendent of school. Yeah, this whole thing has been rigged. I know. <laughs> I knew we should lock up those boxes. I know. Dr. McLeod, if you're watching, I think she's watching from home. Um, for 1938. Oh, I cannot wait to read this more thoroughly. I'd like to see the budget. Yes, yes. Uh, I suspect. Do you want to wait? This is a letter addressed to Mrs. Herbert S. Heath from Hopkinton, Massachusetts, which I feel a little awkward opening. <laughs> um, here's a, a postcard of um, the Siemens and Cobb thread mills, which is Hayden Row. Yep. And then um, this, oh, here's a postcard of the First Congregational Church. Um, let me see if there's anything else easy to, uh, what is this? A receipt, well, not filled out, from Clover Farm Store, C.A. Wood, proprietor in Hopkinton. Oh, 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 it's a good comment then. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the school budget in 1938 was $42,657.99. And I'm sure it was well spent. There were 22 teachers in the Hopkinton Public Schools in 1938. All in, 22 teachers. Mike, look at this. 1833, the assessors of the first parish give notice that they have delivered to Daniel Eames, the treasurer and collector, a correct list of the parish taxes for the year 1833. I know, isn't it incredible? These are the you can see more pictures of the time capsules at seenandhopkinton.org on the Board of Selectmen June 23, 2015 gallery. A few young women between the ages of 12 and 19 from towns throughout the area were in attendance at Ashland's Camp Bailout. The camp allows students to experience the duties of fire department and emergency service professionals. In part one of our Camp Bailout feature, HCAM News caught up with the head of the program, Lieutenant Lynn Morahan of the Ashland Fire Department. Camp Bailout took place for the fifth straight year in Ashland. The camp allows teenage girls from the area between 12 and 19 to explore what it's like to work in the fire and emergency medical service professions. People say that it takes uh, five years for a good business to uh, work and this is our fifth year and we've doubled the amount of girls that we have, so it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, this year we were invited into Massport, to Logan Airport, uh, to the facility in there, the uh, fire station by the assistant chief, Donnie Collins. Uh, so we took our first road trip. We, uh, I had a, a school bus come by yesterday and picked uh, 35 of us up, and off we went into uh, Massport. We had an unbelievable time. They, uh, they treated us uh, unbelievable. It was, it was an unbelievable experience. It was a great experience. 
uh, an opportunity that uh, hopefully these these girls will remember for the rest of their lives. Uh, we got to see their facility, the, the type of equipment that they use, which is slightly different than what we use here in the regular stations. Uh, their engines are slightly different. They're, they most like most they have foam mostly on them uh, f because they have to deal with more flammable liquids mm -hmm. with the planes. Uh, they're called crash trucks. Uh, and then we had an opportunity to uh, go on their new uh, fireboat. So they took us for a trip around the harbor, I guess you could say, uh, and we had an unbelievable time. The girls, uh, not only the girls, the, the instructors too. It was an experience that we'll never forget. Um, so that was one of the things, that new, new items to uh, the camp this year. Uh, I can't imagine we'll be doing it every year because it was quite uh, an endeavor, both on, on our part here, but also mostly for uh, Massport and for Assistant Chief uh, Donnie Collins, uh, for the, the effort that he had to put in and, and uh, uh, the contacts that he had to make and for his staff to accommodate 35 people was, uh, was awesome, but I, I wouldn't ask him to do it every year, that's for sure. Today they were propelling from uh, the top window here of this structure. Uh, they seem to enjoy it, seem to be a little nervous, but they seem to get over it and do a nice job with this. Yeah, the rappelling, we usually do it on Thursdays, the fourth day of the camp, and at that point, the girls are, have gotten to know one another. Uh, so it's a big it's a big confidence builder. Usually at the beginning when we go through the, the briefing, uh, the instructors talk to them, and there's usually about a half a dozen girls that are a little nervous, tentative about it. Uh, by the end of the day, they want to go off. If you take a look, they want to go off the top of, of the uh, the tower. So their confidence builds as the day goes on, uh, mostly due to the, the experience of the instructors, but also the peer support that they get from the girls is fantastic. The encouragement, they see if they can do it, I can do it, kind of a mentality. And that's that's a big component of the camp, is is the, the girls supporting one another and also the instructors encouraging the girls to do things that they wouldn't maybe try themselves. So it's, it's a it, on the fourth day, you really see the difference in the girls and their confidence level. So it's it's pretty exciting for me and my staff to see it. It's always a big hit, the repelling day. Tomorrow is the final day of Camp Bailo. Can you talk about some of the uh, activities that will happen tomorrow? Sure. Tomorrow is uh, we're going to touch on some of the things that we didn't get to. The the day trip kind of took a, a whole day of training uh, off the books that we normally do. So tomorrow is kind of be the fill-in day. We're going to. We're going to do some uh, tower operations, some ladder operations, uh, some company evolution operations, maybe a little bit more team building exercises. And uh, I'll challenge them, maybe I'll bring out the tower truck and see if I can get some of the ladies to climb it, see how their confidence is uh, at that. And then we end, we end off the day with our graduation where the parents get to come in. We put a video together. Uh, I take pictures every day and myself and uh, Mike Terosian put together uh, a, a great DVD for the parents to see what the girls, exactly what the girls have been doing every day. I'm sure they listen to it every every night when they go home, but they'll actually get to see uh, physically what these girls have been doing for the past five days. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We have highlights from the final week of Ashland Legion Baseball, and I caught up with the first-year head coach, Derek Johnson. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds. We also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, the Ashland Legion baseball season wrapped up. Post 77 had four games in the final week, two on the road and two at home. Here is how everything went down. 
Monday, July 13th, 6-7 and 1, Ashland took on Natick for their playoff lives. Bottom of the second, Ashland trailing 1-0, 2-1, no outs, Andrew Keim at the plate. See Keim bunts again here. And he won't. He'll hit a liner over the glove of Christian Boschetto. Runner being waved around. And the throw in is going to be cut off. One run is in to score. An RBI single for Andrew Kine. Natick responded on the top of the third. One out, one on. Kennedy Wilson at the plate. Right up in the pitch. And this is hit into right field above the glove of Nick Burns. One run in. Second run coming around. And the throw in is going to be right to Burns. Two run score on the two RBI single by Kennedy Wilson. Top of the fifth, Natick adds insurance. Ryan Welby at the plate with two on. And this is hit in the air to center field. Deep center field pushing Kime back. That'll drop in front of the wall. Runner being waved around from third. Kime will throw it in. Ball still in the outfield. And another Natick run will score. RBI triple for Ryan Welby. Natick never looks back, grabbing their fifth win of the year as they take down Ashland 5-1. Adam Mooney goes the distance, giving up one run on four hits and had five strikeouts. Kennedy Wilson went three for three at the plate, had three RBIs and two runs. After losing another pair of games, Ashland played their final game of the regular season Post 77 out of the playoff picture, but they aim to make things harder for Newton post 440. Bottom of the first, the post 77 bats got going. One and 16, wind up and the pitch. And this is up the third base side, past the shortstop, and that will fall into left field for a base hit. Runner held up at third, and there will be runners on the corners with no outs. As Holler aboard with the single, Brendan Thurber up to third, Nick Porter to the plate. On the ground, up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the second baseman, throw to third, and they do get the lead runner, or I should say the second runner. Thurber comes around to score. Andrew Kime do up on deck. And this is a liner over to the right side, and that'll drop into right field for a hit. Runner is going to be held up at third. It'll be second and third with one out. For Andrew Kime, a double for Burns. Right lift and the pitch. This hit in the air towards center field, towards the fence, and that'll get over the head of Devlin in center field. One run in, a second run is going to come in, and that is a two RBI double by Andrew Kime. Three to nothing in the bottom of the third, post 77 added more. From the stretch, runners leading. Hit high in the air towards center field. It is handled. Burns going to try to score. The throw in is cut off, and it's 4-0 post-77. Credit Cohan with the sacrifice fly out and RBI. As Brendan Wolf will step in. Ashland knocks Newton down to 12-5 and five with the 4-1 win. Andrew Kime pitched the complete game, giving up one run on four hits. Kaim also was a beast at the plate, going three for three with a double and two RBIs. Nick Burns went two for three with a double and two runs. Ashland Post 77 finished the regular season 7, 10, and 1. All right, I'm here with head coach of Ashland Post 77, Derek Johnson. Coach, a pretty good season, a young team this year. Obviously, things didn't end up the way that you would have hoped, but certainly a lot of good experience gained this year by these players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, coming into the year, I, you know, I took the job two weeks before the season started. And, you know, we had a lot of young kids, but, you know, we have some veterans that help them along the way. Um, you know, started off tough, but came on, you know, I had right before I went away for a couple of days, we were one three zero and one in our last four. We had a good spot to come in and beat some teams this week and get into the four team playoff. Fortunately, it didn't go the way it went when we wanted it to. So, but yeah, it was a strong year. Once we figured out, you know, getting a solid infield in there and, you know, not making the mistakes and capitalizing off other teams' mistakes, you know, we won some ball games and the hitting, hitting and pitching's always been there for us. It's just our defense. 
And it seems there's a good amount of versatility on this team, and there's been some defensive struggles, but a lot of moving pieces here that you could throw around the diamond, and it just seems that the defensive struggles are really an experience thing and maybe a little bit because of the age. Uh, a little bit, you know, a couple of the moves we made were to get actually the younger kids in, um, you know, give them some time in there too. But at the same time, you know, it, it was all around. It wasn't just one person, whatever. And, you know, with, you know, kids, all right, hey, next man up. You know, if you're not going to make the plays and you were going to bring the next man in and we're going to keep doing that until we find someone that can stay there. And, you know, that's pretty much what we did. We found a good rotation as, you know, middle of the year came and stuck with it the rest of the year. Now a great win to wrap up the season against a tough Newton team. 4-1, to one. Andrew Kime pitched a great game. Can you talk about his performance today? Oh, it was awesome. He hasn't really pitched that much for us this year, but, you know, with us, I think the only day off was Saturday. We've been, you know, I don't know, can't think off the top of my head, a lot of games in a row. Didn't have anybody normal pitches to go today, and he got a spot start, and he did awesome. He pitched earlier in the week in relief, and uh, first game of the year other than that. So, but no, he was great today. He kept the ball down, ground balls, and then, you know, fly balls were majority outs. But other than that, yeah, he was really big for us today. So overall, how did your first season coaching Ashland Legion Baseball go? <laughs> Not too bad. It was fun. You know, ups and downs. But, you know, I'm looking forward to go at it early next year and, uh, you know, get the numbers out again and, you know, hopefully get it, you know, get a good solid team. You know, we got a good group of young kids you know, this year that we can build off of. But, you know, can't wait to get at it next year and see where we can go. Well, you still got the Commissioner's Cup to try to get, don't you? Absolutely. We, we're definitely going to try and go get that. And, you know, hopefully everything works out. So. All right, Coach. Well, uh, best of luck to you. We hope you're back for next season. And we look forward to uh, seeing the team next year. Appreciate it. Thank you. You can catch Ashland Legion baseball broadcasts airing on HCAM and also on our website, hcam.tv. To tell you more about what you can expect coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, July 24th at 8 p.m., the hosts share their favorite vacation spots on Hopkinton Coffee Break. I was up till 4 in the morning, ah! which is certainly not Sorry. <laughs> not that the place stays open that late, but we were having so much fun with Throwback Thursday and this DJ, you know, that folks that we were partying with came back to the house, so we were having a little cocktail party impromptu. It's that kind of place. On Saturday, July 25th at 1.30 p.m., we bring you Ashland Legion Baseball versus Bill Ricca, followed by Ashland Legion Baseball versus Tingsboro at 3.15 p.m. At 4.30 p.m., listen to Swing Era songs with the Roy Scott Big Band on Concerts on the Common. Then at 6.25 p.m., the Metro West Symphony Orchestra performs. On Monday, July 27th at 7 p.m., audience members share their poetry, stories, and songs in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Moonlight waned, darkest, deepest, starlight glowed. Remembrances dead, revels ended. Skeleton key slept, locked door again. On a new HCAM News Focus on Tuesday, July 28th at 7 p.m., the young women of Camp Bailout learn the skills necessary to become firefighters. On Wednesday, July 29th at 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee will meet with the Board of Selectmen to present the design and budget for the new elementary school live on HCAM TV. On a new Meet Your Neighbor, on Friday, July 31st at 9 p.m., Diane Norby shares how she started as a medical technician and became the Hopkinton Middle School librarian. I taught um, medical students and um, pathology residents, too. How so interesting. I enjoyed um, the interaction. On Saturday, August 1st at 7.30 p.m., we bring you Dive In Drive In with A Star Is Born. Farm girl Esther lands the part of a lifetime when she is cast beside Hollywood star Norman Maine, but as her stardom rises, Norman's falls. Mike Prate and Mike Tarosian provide behind-the-scenes trivia. A Star Is Born is written and directed by Brookline's own William Wellman. Wellman got an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Wellman had a disdain for Hollywood and it shows in this film. On Sunday, August 2nd at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 27th will air. 
Do you know someone who wants to have the HKIM Insider sent to them every week? If so, just have them send me an email at Courtney at HKIM.TV. If you do receive the HKIM Insider, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HKIM. Now back to you. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HKIM News. Be sure to check our website, HKIM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.